everyone. I'm Dr. Renee Mera. Today's video is on a very critical mental health issue, coping with grief and stress during the pandemic. The webinar was organized by the Indian American Forum, a non-for-profit organization that was started in 1997 in New York to showcase the rich cultural heritage of Asian Indians in America and to foster a deeper understanding between the two countries. The first presenter was Ms. Farah Mozawala, Nassau County Executive Director, Office of Asian American Affairs. She spoke about the counseling and healthcare services that are offered in Nassau County, Long Island for different communities and different languages. The second presenter was Dr. Suchatha Reddy, Doctor of Ayurveda and a licensed mental health counselor. Let's go to the video now. Good evening, everyone. Let me bring Induji with us now. Induji is the chairperson of IAF, and she is a registered dietitian and certified nutritionist by profession and serving the community for several years. Thank you, thank you, Binaji, for that uh, lovely introduction, those kind words. Um, good evening, uh, friends, our members of the panel, Dr. Reddy, Farah Mozawala, our moderators, Dr. Rene Mera, Binaji, and members of our uh, Indian American Forum and our Indian American community. Um, we welcome you in today's uh, very, very important interactive session. First panelist is Farah Mozawala. Farah Mozawala has advocated for marginalized communities for over 20 years. As the executive director of the Office of Asian American Affairs, Ms. Mozawala has played an instrumental role in upholding the well being of the Asian American residents in Nassau County. Thank you to the Indian American Forum for putting together this program. It is much needed, and it's something that we should all be discussing. Uh, Dr. Meher, Dr. Reddy, and uh, Bina uh, Kathori, thank you so much for moderating, and uh, Dr. Reddy for being another panelist on this program. So what does the Office of Asian American Affairs do? We are an agency that was created by the county executive, Laura Kern. It is an actual department within county government to address the needs and concerns of the Asian constituency. The first thing our office did was create a constituent tracking app. So every call, every WhatsApp message, every WeChat message that we have coming into our office, we track that to see why are people calling us? Why are people reaching out to our office? And during the pandemic, we saw an exacerbated, um, the, the issues exacerbated because people needed to reach the government and they didn't know how to reach the government. So our office was a bridge between the Asian community and county government. And that was because we spoke Urdu, Hindi, Mandarin, Arabic, Bangla, all of these languages are spoken by our staff. Now our staff is not volunteers. They're actually county employees that are hired by the government to address your needs and concerns. This staff was able, has the cultural sensitivities to, he, to understand these communities. So as soon as the pandemic hit, people were calling our office for many reasons. And one of the reasons they called our office was because of mental health issues. Uh, we referred them, again, we took in the calls and we were like a triage center. So we would get the calls in and then we would refer them to different agencies. And what we found out that just in the month of July when the pandemic started and in the pre months after that, we had an enormous amount of people calling our office. I mean, we had numbers like, um, I think 30 or 40 cases where people would call our office just for information on burials, barriers. And we would hear stories from constituents and residents, uh, Indian residents and Asian residents that they, their father or their mother or their sister died and they can't bury them. The, the body's in the morgue, the body's in the house and they can't even get it to the morgue. I mean, these stories were traumatic one after another. We would hear stories of seniors and what difficulties they were having. We would hear stories of people losing their entire businesses, people losing their jobs. And all of these brought on mental health issues. Uh, the county has a few numbers that you can call, and I will put those numbers in the chat. The first one is the NASA County Behavior, Behavioral Health Hotline. That number is 516-277-TALK. Again, it's 27, sorry, 
227 talk. Again, that's 227 talk. And they have a language access line. So if you cannot speak English, there are other languages that they can help you in. Also, the Office of Mental Health and Chemical De Dependency, you could reach out to them too. And their number is 227 7057. Again, that's 227 7057. Our office was referring people to these agencies on a daily basis to make sure their needs and concerns were addressed. What did our office do on top of just referring uh, and navigating and helping people navigate through the different county resources? We held a, web a webinar, it was for youth mental health, where we had mental health experts on a webinar, but they were discussing the elephant in the room, uh, problems with children, how do we address those problems? And in this viewership, we had about 3,000 people who ended up listening to this webinar. We've gotten calls about the webinar. They've been translated into various different languages. Our office also quoted posted PSAs, which are public service announcements. These announcements we put on our WhatsApp channels and on our social media and on our WeChat channels. And what this does is if there's, if there's a, a government, uh, whether it's state, local, any type of government assistance, we put that out. And we put out several assistances for mental health throughout the entire pandemic. And after that, also our, our office, what we did was we did virtual yoga classes because uh, the people were in need of some type of stress relief. So I think on yoga day, there was an international yoga day. Where we do a virtual yoga class on that day. And you know, uh, this was something that was an initiative that a stakeholder brought to us and said, maybe you guys can do this. And when we did this, we found that you know people registered. I think we had an enormous amount of people registering and I couldn't believe it because I said, this is virtual, yet so many people wanted to join because there was such a need for it. So those are a few things that our office has done. Uh, again, we, we reach out out to people all the time and this is definitely uh, an issue a lot of the people who speak to us they are extremely nervous in the Asian community to go forward and speak to these different agencies because of the cultural stigmas so our job is to make sure they they feel comfortable that they feel welcome and they know that their information is confidential and then we help them and follow up with them to make sure they get the services they need so if anybody is in need of any mental health services you can reach our office and we can help you get those services and help you guide and guide you to where you need to go. Thank you so much, Andrew. How do you reclaim your old self back? How do you step back into life? And how do you nurture that inner child in you, that inner child that is so torn with grief and trauma and tormented? How does that inner child come back to life? How do you nourish and nurture that inner child and bring that child to become a whole again? So this journey of loss and journey of healing, how do we navigate the tools in this? And how do we rise above this torment and the pain and the suffering? We have a mental health licensed health counselor, Dr. Sujata Reddy from Lakewood, Colorado. She has a humanely Lakewood Wellness Center, but she's in Lakewood, Colorado. She's a doctor of Ayurveda for over 25 years. Let's give a very warm welcome to Dr. Sujatha Reddy. I really appreciate all of you on this panel for having me over today uh, to talk about what each one of us in this whole world is going through today and uh, which we cannot escape. Um, uh, Bina Kotari, thank you. Um, Indu Jaswal, thank you for all your work. Um, and uh, Farah, I, I couldn't say, you know, much more than what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job um, for uh, connecting people to get services with mental health and the way you're uh, doing it is beautiful. And I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, and Renee, of course, um, you've been my very good friend um, uh, and also, you know, um, such accomplished uh, uh, person. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me today, everybody. Uh, today's topic, you know, it's not something we openly talk about, we openly reach out, especially in the Asian community. It's very difficult for us to, um, you know, get help and seek help with grief. And to begin with, I do want to say, you know, what is grief? You know, what, what do you mean by grief? Okay, so grief is a multifaceted response to loss particularly to the loss of someone or something that we have lost, died, which we can never get back, to which a bond 
or an affection was formed you know so that that is grief right and and so what and there are different types of losses you know it doesn't have to be the most i think the grief depth is uh, associated to death you know so death of a loved one is the deepest grief we can ever have but then then there are other uh, you know types of grief too and what what are they you know um one is of course death of a loved one and then death due to covid and environmental factors that we have no control on this is something that you know just sprung on us and we don't know how to handle it we have never experienced this before we don't know no control of the virus um one after the other different uh, you know forms of this virus is coming and this fear of the unknown and we're losing so many people to this virus you know starting from senior citizens to now children and you know i feel really bad for the children today because they don't have a normal childhood like we all did you know so they cannot even show their faces they have to wear masks in schools there there's a lot of fear you know we don't know down the road say in about 3 4 5 6 years what are the repercussions of this whole pandemic that we have been going through it is it has been very traumatizing the other kinds of uh, losses are you know divorce you know this pandemic really has taken a toll in uh, relationships you know with people when they are staying in one you know space you know they used to get away a lot they used to you know um uh have distractions that is not there anymore you know of course slowly we are trying to get back but now when everybody were cooped up at home working from home children at home everybody at home the problems between husband and wife the problems between teenagers you know and parents it has escalated and a lot of them you know uh, have led to uh, divorce and health issues you know think about it you know people have really it has compromised on their health a lot of them have become um victims to uh, addictions alcohol and drugs and you know overeating you know boredom watching tv and nowhere to go helplessness you know so this it has really suffocated people in many ways and then of course job you know the job has been a very different environment of how people have to work you know it has not it's not the norm you know now we are now we have a new normal which we will never go back to you know the whole entire world has now changed completely because of this pandemic there is a loss of identity you know grieving that loss of identity grieving that what we were used to and what we used to derive happiness from and the, of course another thing is when you lose a job or when you're at an age and you retire retirement is again lo- losing an identity right especially for men it is very difficult to um reinvent who they are you know they would be associated with their job and their profession now when they get re- when they are retired who are they you know the statistics has shown that after retirement men suffer you know uh, from uh, depression a lot and you know it's it's a uh, lot of suicide rates are high and loss of a dream uh, loss of friendships loss of home country loss of culture lot loss of gatherings you know what what have we seen you know um i can talk for myself my daughter was supposed to get married right and now with this whole pandemic she couldn't do that there's so much you know she could not do so she had to like wait for a whole year and this pandemic was never going away and what what did she have to do is not invite the people who she wanted in her in her wedding and it was a very small gathering and then and i lost my mother who is in india you know travel you know think about the complications the whole how do we cope and how do we uh, you know uh, with this whole grief has changed i have attended at least four or five funerals via zoom you know it's that is unheard of so everything about how we do things has completely changed you know in different cultures especially in the asian cultures you know we have um rituals right when we lose somebody when a person you know uh, uh, has passed on we have some death rituals and these death rituals you know go on from we go we are going to 13 to 15 days and you know every day there is huh? some ritual or the other that is 
uh, done so that we help the people to grieve, we help the people to, uh, the soul to pass on, you know, so these are all some rituals that have been placed, uh, whether it is a, uh, you're coming from a, a Hindu background or a Muslim background or a Christian background, there is different rituals and these rituals are so important for bringing people and, you know, friends and family together to help grieve. You know, I don't know if you all remember, there was a Hindi movie called Rudali. I don't know if you all remember that. Um, that, you know, movie really expressed how they had professional people who would come and cry, you know, because to bring out grief from people, you know, who were shocked and who couldn't cry and who couldn't go through grief. So it kind of helped them. So every system, every, every uh, religious background has their own ways of dealing with grief. Uh, like some of the things uh, that uh, faith-based rituals um, help grieving will be with a pilgrimage or temples or community activities or, you know, spiritual retreats. Sometimes, you know, there is a uh, losing faith, you know, in God, you know, so the, people are get very upset you know when they lose their loved one you know so then they lose faith in god you know what did god do god just took away who i know somebody that i i wanted in my life somebody that i loved in my life now what am i going to do you know there is no god you know there's all these uh, expressions of anger right so in uh, ayurveda you know i'm also an ayurvedic doctor so what happens you know when grieving is not going in the normal process as it needs to go when somebody gets stuck in in grief uh it affects our uh, not just our mind but even you know our body especially in our body our lungs and our heart are affected by grief you know sometimes there's heavy feeling in our chest you know just it just chronically you know you feel stuck you can move on you feel heavy and so uh lungs really hold grief lungs and the heart so we have to be very careful uh, about self-care and how we take care of ourselves you know uh, the uh, the lungs are the site of what we call in ayurvedic terms as kapha and it is ruled by the elements of earth and water so it can lead to lung disease you know chronically if we do not you know take care of ourselves hope you like this video don't forget to share and subscribe until next time, I'm Dr. Renee Mera. Stay healthy, stay positive.